Dear God, I know I'm supposed to be thankful in all things, in all the seasons, through trials and tribulations, in good times and bad, but here I am in the middle of it, sad and overwhelmed. The world as I knew it is gone. People I love are suffering. The life I walk through is suddenly no more. I can't gather around a table and celebrate family. I can't hold hands with those I care about. Instead, grief and despair seem to be eager dinner guests. God, I don't feel like celebrating. But I sit at my table and I close my eyes, listening for that still small voice, the one that always manages to rise above all the noise of this life. I hear you. Above the sadness, above the fear, above the bewilderment of all that has happened this year. There you are, whispering, be still, and know that I am God. And I close my eyes, and I take a deep breath, and I find my thankfulness in a God who is still in control. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Nathan's Notes this Friday morning as we continue to journey together through the season of Advent. Here this morning, our devotion. It is easy to see the shadows of earth. Our human condition wires us to notice the, to notice the, the depraved injustices, the depressing news, the distraught people around us, Because we live in the time of already but not yet, that is the already that Jesus has come, but the not yet that the kingdom has fully been restored, our world is not as it should be. And so we wait, wondering if there is a reason to hope. Shadows imply light. Plato once told the story of a cave of shadows and people entranced by their flickering dance on the wall, Yet the shadows are not the reality. They merely hint at the full truth behind those gazing at the wall. We too tend to stare at shadows in front of us, ignoring the light behind us. If we live in the shadowlands of burden and challenge, our survival depends on the hope that there is a light source and that the shadows weaken the closer we move towards the light. In Advent, then, We recognize the shadows for what they are as we move slowly toward the origin of that ray of light beaming on our cave wall. And this is from Psalm chapter 16. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure, for you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, our image today, and I'll put it up here. This is Jose and Maria by Everett Patterson. And this is the nativity story reimagined as if it was happening today. And it brings an interesting thought into this question that we're about to ask. It says, where do you see the hand of God working in the midst of shadow? Now, there is a lot of things going on in today's world that we could definitely classify as shadow, the absence of light. Um, There's a lot of brokenness. There's a lot of people who are being harmed, both by individuals and by systems of injustice. 
And yet, we cannot allow ourselves to be drugged down into inactive depression because of these thoughts. And it's easy to do. Like the, script, like the book was saying, we're kind of hardwired for that uh, because of the brokenness in this world that also resides within us. But as people of God who bear the image of Christ within themselves, we look at the injustices and the brokenness of this world, and yes, we can get sad, and yes, we can get depressed, but ultimately what we will hear is the calling of God to go and do. Go and do something. Go and be light for a people lost in darkness. Go and bless. I often think of the image of Joseph and Mary, or in this image, Jose and Maria. How scared they must have been to be this young couple with a baby in an unfamiliar town and then to discover that there's no place for them to stay. Our Lord's beginnings are a way of pointing a finger and saying, go and love, go and help. There's no room at the end is not something we should have to say. Our response should be, let me find something. Let me make a call. Let me see what I can do. Let me see how we can help. Our Lord's beginnings tell us many different things. But I believe that's one of the ones that we are pointed out to see. Go and help. Go and love. No one should have to suffer. So is God's hand moving in the midst of shadows? Yes, because we can see lives that were lost in the darkness, that are now transformed and, and thriving in the light. That is what we have to remember, is no matter how bad it gets, yes, God is in control, but not only how, no matter how bad it gets, God can do amazing things, and we can see the bad transformed into the good. And I say that saying that we need to remember sometimes the story of Saul, who became Paul. One who was actively persecuting the church, became one of the most influential leaders in the church. The current situation does not dictate the future reality. God is in control. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, we need to remember just that. So this morning, I pray that you are blessed with a beautiful day. I pray that you are blessed with phone calls and with places to go and things to do, and that God interrupts you in the midst of those to show you how much you are loved. I pray all this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God bless, church.